Affinity Photo has a layer type called the Fill Layer, which combines solid color, gradient, and bitmap fills into one layer type. It's incredibly versatile for a number of different workflows, and I'll show you a few examples of how to use it. First, I have a diagram here with several placed PDF floor plans. I've drawn out some custom pen tool curves to highlight certain areas of each floor plan, but I might want to dim or reduce the focus of the black line work. An easy way to do this is to add a fill layer by going to Layer, New Fill Layer. This adds a pure white fill at the current layer stack position, which for me is at the very top. I'll click drag and reposition this layer so it sits above the placed PDF layers but underneath all my vector shapes. Now I'll change the fill layer opacity to 50%. And if I hide the layer, then show it again, you'll see it creates a softer, faded look for the black line work underneath. That's a very basic example, but fill layers can be masked to specific areas, which is very useful for non-destructive flood filling. I've imported a PDF vector floor plan here, and I might want to flood fill separate rooms with different colors. I'll zoom in on the bedroom and choose the flood select tool from the tools panel. Because I'm working with vector information in groups, I'll change source to all layers. This will let me make an accurate selection, regardless of which layer I currently have selected. I'll also enable anti-alias and set the initial tolerance to 1%. Now I'll single click into the white area of the bedroom to make a selection. And with this selection active, I'll go to Layer, New Fill Layer. Then I'll deselect with Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. Now initially, nothing seems to have happened. This is because the fill is pure white by default. If I look up here, I can click on the fill color icon and change this to any color I want. A mid blue, for example. This color can be changed non-destructively at any time. For example, if I switch away to a different tool and a different layer, then come back to this fill layer, I can access the color option a couple of different ways. One is to go to the color panel, and I can easily alter the color here, changing to a different model, such as a color wheel, if I wish. Another method is to switch to the move tool with V, which will present the fill option on the context toolbar up here. Or alternatively, I can switch to the gradient tool with G, which will also let me change the fill type as well as the fill color. There is, however, an issue here with the door swing. Luckily, changing a fill layer's mask is quite easy. There is no separate mask to select beforehand. This fill layer simply has its own built-in mask. All I need to do is select the rectangular marquee tool, enable anti-alias, then draw across the area. I want to add to the mask. Now I'll go to Edit, Fill. And on the dialog, the custom color defaults to white, which is perfect. I'll see the result already where this new area is now being filled. So I'll click Apply and once again deselect. To reveal the line work I've just filled, I can bring down the opacity of the fill layer, say to around 50%. Alternatively, if I want to maintain the color rather than fading it, I can reset the opacity to 100% and instead change the layer's blend mode to multiply. This solid color fill can easily become a gradient without having to create a new layer. I'll switch to the gradient tool with G and I can change the fill type up here. I could, for example, change it to radial, then click drag roughly in the center of the fill, to draw out a radial gradient from this point. Once created, I can edit the distance between the two nodes, use this slider to alter the balance between the two nodes, or change the origin of the center node. If I decide this would work better as a solid color, I can simply change the type back to solid on the context toolbar. Moving on. Fill layers are also useful for compositing and photographic workflows. 
In this example, I've removed the background sky of this photograph, and I'll now show these three layers I'm using for a sky replacement. I need to match the haze of the photograph's horizon to blend these two different areas together. To achieve this, I'll use a fill layer. I want to add it above the background canyons layer, but below the foreground layer. I'll go to Layer, New Fill Layer. As before, this defaults to a pure white fill. Creating a fill layer selects the gradient tool automatically, so I can click drag from the horizon line and bring the cursor up to draw a gradient, holding Shift to constrain the gradient line. Now I'll set the fill layer's blend mode to screen. I'll click the bottom node here as I want to change the color to match the teal tone of the haze. Zooming in, I can click drag the color picker from the color panel here and sample from one of these haze tones. Then click here to apply it. The effect is slightly too strong, so I can take the fill layer opacity down to around 80%. And now I have a good blend between the foreground and background detail. Fill layers are also useful for creating vignette effects. Here, for example, I may want quite a dramatic vignette that darkens the edges of the image and draws the viewer's attention to the middle. I'll go to Layer, New Fill Layer. Then I'll immediately click drag from the middle and create a white to black linear gradient. Now I'll change the fill type to elliptical. And I'll set the fill layer's blend mode to multiply. And now we have the basic vignette. I can click drag on the nodes here to control the rotation of this elliptical vignette. If I wanted to change the shape to suit a certain aspect ratio, I could click drag on one of the nodes and hold Ctrl on Mac, right mouse on Windows. And to ensure the gradient is aligned centrally to the image, I can enable snapping up here. Then click drag the middle node until the red and green alignment indicators appear. Changing the fill layer opacity will control the strength of the vignetting. And don't forget this layer is non-destructive. As I've shown before, I can move away to a different tool and layer, then come back to this layer, switch to the gradient tool with G, and modify any of the parameters, such as the balance between the nodes. And there we go, some examples of how to use the fill layer in Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.